So everybody understands that we're recording now. And here's our module two that you're working on now. I would highly recommend, this is a great idea to literally read that entire chapter. Um, so occasionally I have lecture notes which are, are like a PowerPoint uh, discussion review of the chapter. It's a, a nice way to summarize. And then this essentials, um, let's look at the essentials for chapter two. Okay, so there's always a discussion of why, why this chapter is important. In this case, the chapter is important because the rest of the semester, you're going to use tables and charts to be able to produce your future written reports. Here I've got a bunch of, of uh, character variable. Okay, so this must have been a sample. And the sample that I got was an A, B, B, C, A, C, blah, 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 blah. Okay. If I do it, uh, so I've taken that, that data, made it into a vector, and stored that vector in X. I could have named that anything that I want. Then if I ask, R to do a table of X, <clears throat> then look at the output that R gives me. So notice what table does here. It's really a, a useful thing when I've got this raw data because it looks and says, well, there's one, two, three A's. So when I ask for a table of this object X, which was the vector containing that sample, then I've got three A's, four B's, and four C's. There's, it, it goes through and does that counting for us and builds essentially a frequency table for, for that information. Here's a script. Let me just walk through the script and, and uh, see what it's saying. So in this script, I'm building that vector. So there's my C building my combined function, building this, concatenating that into a vector, then storing it into an object called X. Then I want to build a table <laughs> of that, and I'm going to store that table in an object that I called X dot T, just to remind me that it was a table. Then over here, I've, I've put a comment to help me or any other reader that's reading this script see what's happening. I'm ca count the number of each unique value. Okay, so it was it was doing what was here, but it's taking this object and sh the, this uh, table and storing it in an object called x dot t. Then I want to convert that table to a data frame. Data frame is a powerful uh, function in R. And, and so now I'm gonna call it an x.df for data frame. And I'm reminding myself here with the little comment, I'm converting the table to a data frame. When I organize these, I try and line my comments up so it just makes it easier to read. But R doesn't pay any attention to this stuff over here that happens after the hashtag. That's just a comment to help me or someone else who's reading this script see what's happening. Okay, so now what the data frame looks like is there's the x variable. The, this is just the row number and uh, that may be annoying but a data frame just always lists the row numbers. Uh, so there's the variables, A, B, C, and D. Those are the unique variables involved. And there's the frequency. So if you look at this table and this table, it's exactly the same information. It's just organized in a, in a different way. Uh, data frames are a nice way to do that. So that becomes a frequency table. Okay. A relative frequency means that instead of, of, of listing how many times an A shows up, 
we want to look at what fraction of the time an A shows up. <clears throat> if you have a, a table, a data frame, <clears throat> then you can pull out these vectors. There's really two vectors here. There's the, the vector of unique values and there's the vector of the frequencies. So if I wanted to, to pick out the unique values, I'm calling that x dot value, then, then I could look at this data frame. Remember we had built that x dot data frame up here. So I've got that object. And <clears throat> then I just want to, to ask it to tell me what's that, what is that column. So that dollar sign x just grabs that column and makes it a vector. Okay, so there's the A, B, C, D. On the other hand, if I wanted to have the frequency, so that, that's gonna be a numerical variable, and uh, I call that X dot frequency, and I just looked at X dot that, which was this object, and dollar sign uh, freak, for frequency so that that would tell me that vector and that's showing me that I've got three, four, three, five, four, three, five, four, and two. Now, if I had those two vectors and I needed to put them into a data frame, I'm just rebuilding the same data frame that I had before. I'm building a data frame with this as one of the vectors, with this as the other vector. So is tell, let me point out what we're trying to do here. If we've got raw data, then table can turn this into a, a table and data frame can turn a table into a, this data frame format. If we have a data frame we can pull out these individual vectors in the data frame. In this case, one was a categorical variable and the other one was a, uh, a numerical variable. And we could pull those out using this dollar sign trick. If I had two vectors that have been pulled out, then I can put them together in a data frame to produce a data frame table. If all that I had was this table, I had three A's, five B's, four C's, and two D's. So I could add those up. I could have summed this vector to find that 14 as well. In fact, if you have a, a frequency table, I think I, there's a little help video in the homework if you've got a frequency table and you need to build a relative frequency table, uh, look at the, uh, the videos. There's one video where um, Professor Sosa does it with a calculator. And then there's a second video where I show you just how to use R, which is once you catch on to it, it's really much easier than having to do it by hand or with the calculator. <clears throat> so there's uh, bar graphs. A bar graph is a nice way to explain categorical values, okay? There's that same information as a relative frequency bar graph. Let me go to an R online compiler and do some of these. Okay, can you see both of these now? So I'm just going to call it X instead of X dot. X is A, B, C, and D. C and D. And I only and I need commas between those. Oops. Okay. So at this point, I'm, 
I'm not looking at relative frequency, I'm looking at frequency. Okay. So I could build a data frame involving X and frequency. I can execute that script and there's the data frame that we saw before. Okay. And uh, some of you had noticed that you would have a, a frequency distribution that you needed to make a relative frequency distribution. So let's build a relative frequency distribution now. What I need to know is what the total number in the sample is. Well, there were three A's, three A's, five B's, four C's, and two D's. So if I looked at the sum of the frequency, that will really tell me that, let me just print that out so I can see it as I go along. There's 14 of them. I mean, that's what that adds up to be is, is 14. So I now know what my sample size is. So now I can calculate the relative frequency quite easily because the relative frequency will just be the frequency divided by that n. So three divided by 14, five divided by 14, and so on. And let's print that out just so that we can follow along and see what's happening. So there's the relative frequencies, one, two, three, uh, four of them there, okay? So, so if I wanted a relative frequency table, I could use that data frame command again, and X with the relative frequency. Now these names that I'm using over here, I'm just making up as I go along, what, it, what the object names you can ask them to be whatever you want them to be. So there's the relative frequency table. There's about 21% of them are A's, 35%, almost 36% are B's, 28.5%, uh, almost 29% are C's, and 14% are D's. Okay. If we did a bar plot of frequency, then that's what we get, okay? Frequency, there at one time we had as many as five. We had three in this one, four, but see there's nothing labeled here. We need to, uh, to add some more things. I'd like to, to put a name on each one of, of uh, those columns. And uh, when we did that, names.arg is what we needed to put there. Okay, so if I was doing this, I, I might organize it like this. Because this would be such a long line, it's sometimes easier for my, my mind to be able to read the script if each one of these values are put in a, in a column like this. Oh, let's see, I've forgotten what that, oh, it was names.arg, the names argument. So names.arg needs to be equal to, and, and I could, I could put this, command there, control V, oops, what, did, what happened? I need to take that, copy that and put it right there. Okay, so this, Yeah, I'm running out of space on my desktop here. I'm 
for readability purposes, I'd like to have this stretched out enough that, that okay. So there's, there's the frequency variable, there's the names.org. Now when I execute that, then that names.arg put these names, those name arguments associated with the respective columns. Now I'd like to have, now, now it was kind of silly for me to, to type in all that because I've already built that object X. So I could just use, use X which would make that a lot easier to, do you, do you see how it's nice to be able to use these objects that we've created? Then, um, it would be nice to have a, a title on this. So notice that each of these uh, arguments in the, in bar plot are separated by a comma and I need to have main a title for this is equal to grades on a test or whatever this is all about. Now when I execute that then I've got this oh I don't know if you're seeing that. Okay, so now it put that up there. So what I'm trying to illustrate here is what each of these individual commands are doing. Comma, let's put some more in. I'd like to have a label on the x-axis, a label on the y-axis. Uh, x label is uh, unique grades, okay, because there is an A, B, C, and D. I want to separate that with the comma and the Y label is uh, the frequency or number of grades or whatever you want to call that. number of grades, the, the frequent, this is a, we are doing this as a frequency table this time. So the number of grades or the frequency that each of those showed up. And then finally, uh, put a comma, if I wanted, do I write the whole word color or just C-O-L, C-O-L. Hot pink. Wonder if that is a color or not. Ah, cool. Um, I might, if all that I wanted was the bar plot, I might be, begin to clean up this script because I really don't need to show that or that. All that I'm interested in is just showing the bar plot. So I could, could include that script. I can just highlight that and copy it and paste it into my, my report. And then, ooh, why am I getting an error? I must have erased something that I shouldn't have. Uh, frequency not found. That's right. Because I, wiped out the frequency vector, didn't I? Uh, there must have been up here. There had to have been a frequency vector. And I don't remember what our values were there. The frequency vector was three, five, four, and two. Three, five, four, and two. So now if I execute that, is, does it run? Uh, so this data frame, maybe I don't want that one anymore. Execute that. 
I don't want this data frame. All that I want is the bar plot. Execute. If I wanted this to be as a relative frequency, then I could have done relative frequency, then my Y lab. should be a relative frequency. Execute. So now this is scored as a, as a fraction of each of them instead of the total number. When I'm making my report, I can just copy that uh, so there's a bunch of blah blah here. We're saying so there's there's my script that I've copied and pasted in and then I can copy that image and paste it in to my report as well maybe I want to try and shrink it down a little bit then I'm said okay now here is the script that i use to produce this particular result and here is my result and here is the conclusion i'm getting from that oh, so maybe my conclusion is the most common grade was b but, but now notice that once you've actually created these, these uh, vectors and these different objects, it's really quick and easy to ask R to do amazing, powerful things. I tried to include uh, some videos here and there to, to help support in the homework. If, there, if you discover that there's a problem that has, that's especially challenging let me know and i'll try and put a video together that will be helpful in that particular area we'll we will have two more times to look at details in this chapter agreed this chapter is is far more challenging than chapter one we're taking two weeks on it uh, for that very reason and it becomes especially important that you begin to capture how to do this stuff, not that you have to memorize how to do everything, but that you know where you can get the instructions for building these different charts and, and plots because you're going to need those in reports throughout the rest of the semester. Okay? Okay, I'm stopping.